Welcome back, baseball fans, to Volunteer State Community College, where we are set to begin game number two of the doubleheader. Columbia State won game one, three to nothing in seven innings. They moved to seven and three in conference play. Ball State falls to one and eight. Game two of the doubleheader, then game three of the series will begin tomorrow at 1 p.m. It'll be a nine-inning contest. Columbia State, three runs, five hits. They left eight runners on base in game one. Ball State, no runs, four hits. They also left eight runners on base. Winning pitcher, Grayson King. The loser, Caleb Pika, falls to 0-6. Jay Watson with the win. You see head coach Desi Ammons uh, for the Columbia State Chargers and Jim McGuire meeting with the umpires. McGuire in his third year as Chris Judkins will be behind home plate for game two. And Jake Wolf be out on the bases. Let's get to our Toyota of Gallatin starting lineups quickly. First for the Chargers, Charlie Davis leading off playing third base. Cut Hudson Miles back at second base. He's batting second. Jackson Diamond in right field hitting third. Left fielder Jackson Reedling in the cleanup spot. The new DH in game two is Michael McClellan. Blake Merwin back out in center field hitting six. Braxton Baird at shortstop batting seventh. Brady Hendricks will hit eighth and play first base again. And behind the plate, Wyatt Heidel will catch Cole O'Brien. O'Brien on for his sixth uh, sixth appearance of the year. All starts. He has a complete game. Record showing on the junior college website is one and two, but that may or may not be accurate. 18 innings of work. I feel pretty confident in these stats. 18 innings of work, 16 hits, 14 runs, 13 earned. Has walked 11, struck out 27 batters, and hit Seven has a 6.50 ERA. And you see the Pioneers taking the field. I'll give you their defensive alignment as Gage Hoover will be the left fielder for game two. Reggie Cooper back out in center field. And Stephen Bell back out in right field. Nathan Aguilar gets the start here in game two. That will be his second start of the year. In his fourth game, he came on as a pinch hitter, hit an absolute rope to right field that Jackson Diamond made a nice catch on. Logan Molnar back out at short, Corbin Overbay at second, and Connor Paul at first. Behind the plate, Drew Plummer, who's catching red shirt sophomore Caden Johnson from Huntsville, Alabama. He's on for his eighth appearance of the year. Sixth start, he has a complete game and a save. Two and one record, 19 in the third innings, 12 hits, nine runs. Six of those are earned. Walked 22, struck out 32. Given up two long balls and hit two batters as a 2.79 ERA. Does not qualify as one of the leaders in that category because he's not pitched as many innings as Ball State has played games, so this is game number 25 of the year. If he throws six innings today, then he would qualify for the ERA lead. Let's see who does have that. Breedlove from Cleveland State. I believe his name is Austin Breedlove in Cleveland State. Coming into today, or at least currently 1.76 ERA. I don't know these pitchers' first names. They have M. West. M. West for Walter State with a 2.03. Cribs with Cleveland State, 3.06. Carson Bonaparte, I do know his first name, 3.19. Caleb Pika came in today as having the fifth best ERA at 4.15. And he gave up two earned runs in six innings, so he'll lower his ERA. Hoover in left, Cooper in center, Bell in right, Aguilar at third, Molnar at short, Overbay at second, Paul at first, and Drew Plummer catches the first offering from Caden Johnson 
at 3.49 or 3.50 Central Time. We are underway. There's a strike called on the outside corner. Get you our game time temperature, see if we can pull that up. Brought to you by Sumner Regional Medical Center. Fouled off as Charlie Davis did that quite a few times in his first at-bat in game one. 57 degrees at game time. Feels like 53. There's a ground ball to the right side. Just like in game one, Charlie Davis is going to ground out. Connor Paul unassisted. Hudson Miles, who walked three times in game one, went 0 for 1, and his hitting streak stopped at seven games. Steps in. First pitch from Johnson misses out. Miles 5'8", 155 pounds. A little bit of a smaller target, going to draw some walks. Plummer got his first start behind the plate past weekend down at Roan State. Back behind the plate again for the Pioneers. Which is that 2-0 fastball for a called strike. Miles from Good Pasture High School produced a lot of great athletes over there, the Cougars. Got a couple playing in minor league baseball right now. Former Team Reese teammate of Hudson Miles. Three-year player for me in the fall. Carson Rucker playing in the Detroit Tigers organization down in Lakeland, Florida. Just got drafted in the fourth round by the Tigers past year. Out. His brother, Jake Rucker, who went to JP2, or Pope Prep, now head coach by John Rypel, is in the Minnesota Twins organization. He's still playing in the minor league spring training games. 3-2 pitch, and there's the fourth walk of the day for Hudson Miles. Hudson, H-U-T-S-O-N, been on base four out of the five times he's come to the plate. To the plate. He went 0 for 3, walked, struck out. Game one from Science Hill High School. Johnson City, Tennessee. Breaking pitch catches the inside corner. Another left handed pitcher. That ball gets through the wickets of Drew Plummer and comes all the way to the backstop. Hudson Miles, a big turn at second base, but he will hold up there. Wild pitch moves Miles down to second. Diamond looking at 1-1 one, one count. Desi Ammons, the head coach, coaching down at third base. Junior Martinez. There's a ground ball to Molnar. He looks to third, but throws to first. On the ground out, Miles moves over to third. Now two outs. The Chargers half of the first. Jackson Reedling steps to the plate. Lots of X's on the uh, Columbia State Chargers lineup card. Or X sounds as well. This Jackson Reedling does not have an X in his name. Jackson Diamond does, J-A-X-S-O-N. But Jackson is Jack and Son. Now, put his hands right in on that fastball, but able to get him back just in time. Reedling 0 for 3 in game 1, but had two RBIs, one on a sacrifice fly, one on a ground out. 
Second straight left-handed hit or pitcher that Columbia State faces. Ball four. Second walk of the inning for Columbia State as Reedley hustles down to first. His first time to touch first base and be able to stay there today. Two walks in the inning. Johnson comes in with 22. Now Michael McClellan will step in with two outs and runners at the corners. Oh, and 5 7 160 from Murfreesboro Riverdale High School. Going to look at a called strike. So 5 8 Hudson Miles standing at third and 5 7 Michael McClellan standing at the dish. McClellan was the starting second baseman before Hudson Miles got in there, I understand. Throw over to first base and Reedling is back. Clellan hitting 373, so I'm not sure if he came out with an injury or what, but fouls that one off. MGM Industries foul ball. Mr. Joe Gaskins and Patrick Stewart for these custom-made windows here in the press box. We can keep them closed during this cold weather here and still be able to watch baseball. 0-2 pitch. Blocked by a plumber. It's in the dirt. Reedling's going to move on down to second base, but Miles stays at third. Nice read by Reedling. Two runners in scoring position here in the top of the first inning. No hits. Both those. Runners reached via the walk. Two outs. Breaking pitch right over the outside corner for strike three. And Caden Johnson gets out of the jam with that breaking pitch over the outside corner. His first strike out of the ball game. No runs, no hits, no errors. Two runners left on base. We will head to the bottom of the first. Give you the Toyota of Gallatin starting lineup for the Pioneers. Stephen Bell leading off, playing right field. Corbin Overbay batting second, playing second. Logan Molnar at short, hitting third. Cannon Lewis, the DH again, he'll hit cleanup. Connor Paul, who was two for two in game one. Couple hits, and he got hit. He is batting fifth, playing first base. Nathan Aguilar batting sixth, playing third base. Gage Hoover in left field, batting seventh. Drew Plummer is hitting eighth. And is catching and Reggie Cooper batting ninth, playing center field. They will face Cole O'Brien on for his sixth appearance of the year. That's a complete game. O'Brien, 6'2", 195-pound sophomore from Decatur, Alabama. So we have two starting pitchers from Alabama area, Decatur and Huntsville. We went to Decatur Heritage High School. Caden Johnson Sparkman High School down in Huntsville, Alabama. So a couple of Alabamians getting after it here in game two of our doubleheader. Those starting lineups brought to you by Toyota of Gallatin. You can go on Facebook, see the newest actors of the Screen Actors Guild, Jim McGuire and Johnny Lynn. Along with general sales manager Jake Thompson at Toyota of Gallatin. You're going to see a couple comical spots there for Toyota of Gallatin on Facebook. Google Jake Thompson. See the acting debuts for Jim McGuire, the head coach, baseball, and the head men's basketball coach, Johnny Lynn. Stephen Bell steps in. First pitch he sees is a called strike on the outside corner. Johnny Lynn was just named to the All-Decade team in Nashville basketball, 1980s. 
There's a ground ball to short. Baird on two hops. Throws on the run over to Hendricks for out number one. Bell went 0 for 3 in game one. Corbin Overbay went 0 for 4. Ball State only had four hits. Two of them picked up by Connor Paul. Lex Falsoni had one. And Logan Molnar had one. Overbay. So another called strike. O'Brien. Pumping them in there. That one stays up. Wyatt Heidel, the new catcher behind the plate after Abner Rodriguez handled game one. Corbin Overbay, a get off of me swing right there as a fastball headed toward his front shoulder. Fouls that one into the parking lot. The train is here. Can't hear it unless I turn up the field mic. One ball, two strikes to Corbin Overbay. Logan Molnar stands on deck. Overbay thought about offering at that high fastball, but he was able to hold up. Another MGM Industries foul ball off the bat of Overbay. Sophomore from Sevierville, Tennessee. And Cam Hodges, the two Smoky Bears here from Sevier County High School. Cam Hodges, redshirt freshman outfielder. Ground ball. Coach McGuire looks at it. They go right on by him. Off the brick wall and stopped by somebody down there at the bullpen. Over Bay hanging in there against Cole O'Brien, who Spikes one there, and I'm not sure how that hit Wyatt Heidel in the back of his neck. But apparently a ricochet action right there. And we'll have a full count ministries. Full count. There's the other Smokey Bear, Cam Hodges, getting some camera time. Love that guy. Met his father, Michael, the other day at Roan County. Full count. Pitch foul ball toward the Chargers bullpen. That'll head off the roof of the Bobby Hudson Pavilion down the right field line. Athletic director here. Not grilling hamburgers and hot dogs today for the concession stand, but during the conference tournament back last May. Whoops. Only have one out. He was grilling a lot of hamburgers and hot dogs. I got full count. Why is it? That one gets into the dugout. Overbay is slicing them everywhere. Another full count ministries. Full count here. That one gets by Corbin Overbay and Wyatt Heidel. Ball four. With one out. First base runner for the Pioneers is Corbin Overbay. His first time to reach today. Logan Molnar went one for three. A couple fly outs. In game one. Does not swing at the first pitch. Ball down low. Another pitch down low. I don't have a little trouble with that mask flying off. Duo pitch will happen right after this throw over to first. Logan Molnar had 
hitting streak stopped at seven games during the second game against BCA on Wednesday. Now look at a three balls and no strike count. Cannon Lewis, the DH, standing on deck. Get in there for a called strike. Molnar's played in every game since we sat out against Cole Calhoun down from Decatur, Alabama. They came up and played a doubleheader. Three one pitch. Grounded the third, Charlie Davis. Throws to second and safe at second base. Molnar going to have to, well, he will go to second base. Safe call at second base. Not sure what the issue was there. Time is called now. The throw got away from Brady Hendricks. It's going to be runners at second and third on the errant throw by Hudson Miles. I guess the throw from Charlie Davis pulled Hudson Miles off of second base. So that's going to be an error on Miles. Number 30, Cannon Lewis. Molnar reaches on a fielder's choice, but moves to second base on the E. Cannon Lewis steps in. The first error of the day for either team. Swing and a foul tip into the glove. Strike one. They called strike two. Lewis down in the count. Quickly to Cole O'Brien. And an 0 for 3 in game one with a strikeout. Strike three. That's a way too good a pitch to be looking at on an 0-2 count. Two outs. Connor Paul steps in. He got hit right on the ankle. His third at bat in game one. Apparently he's well enough to go here in game two. Fastball up. Two hits to the left side in game one. One underneath the glove of third baseman Charlie Davis and one over the head of shortstop Braxton Baird. Pitches the outside corner. Throw on that outside part of the plate. You're playing right into the hands of Connor Paul. Especially with this wind right here, I'd come right, right at him, right inside, make him pull the ball. And that's exactly where they went there for a called strike. Now goes one ball, two strikes to Paul's. Ball State trying to push across their first run of the afternoon here in game two of the doubleheader. Got a piece of that off-speed pitch, fouls it straight back. Hunter Paul came into the day hitting 390. Going over the 400 mark, maybe with a two for two. 18 for 43. Let's see if we can get somebody up here with a calculator. Swing and a miss on that fastball that was tailing away. Nice job by Cole O'Brien to work around the walk and the air. No runs, no hits. One error, two runners left on base. Strikes out the last two batters. Get out of the inning and Still no score. Let's see what kind of new commercials we can find here on the Ball State Sports Network. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. 
At Vile State, we offer end-to-end -end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Vol State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. I took business management because I want to have my own business one day. It was time for me to take that step and enroll in Ball State. When a student comes to Ball State, they can leave here with knowledge that applies to all aspects of business. Cybercrimes take place online, and companies need more well-trained workers to stop it. Ball State is training me to help combat cybercrimes in the future. We're training them for those type of jobs that are out there Ball State CIT programs prepare students to earn industry standard certifications within the IT industry. I choose Ball State because the future needs me now. My story could be your story. Jim Reese back in Gallatin, Tennessee, about 20 miles northeast of Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA in Sumner County. Beautiful sunny day with a little bit of wind pushing in from center field toward the third base dugout. Six, seven, and eight due up for the Columbia State Chargers. First pitch nearly hits Blake Merwin, the center fielder. He does that. I'm going to have to name that dance. I keep saying I'm going to have to name it. Where the middle section goes back and the top section leans back over the plate. Same plate that Caden Johnson just threw a strike over. One ball, one strike to Merwin. Another Murfreesboro product gets jammed there. That goes over just off the top of the Pioneer dugout. Irwin was two for three in game one, had an RBI. Breaking pitch over for a called strike. Nice sharp breaker there by Caden Johnson. He's got back-to-back -back strikeouts. One to end the first and one to start the second. Braxton Baird, a shortstop, steps in. He's got one of those bright orange bats. I wonder if he and Landon Luderman are using the same bat there. Baird was one for three. He's from Siegel High School. Originally started his college career at Carson Newman. Played, I believe, the last couple years with in the Ohio Valley League in the summer with the Fulton Railroaders. Played a little shortstop, played some outfield. He is growing into that six foot four frame now. Does the dance, the get out of the way dance. Still working on that, Quasi. You, you feel free to help me, okay, up here in the press box, gang. Three balls and a strike to Baird. Alex Qualls has joined the press box group up here. He's keeping the scoreboard. Of course, DJ BA, Braxton Alexander is spinning the tunes and our public address announcer 3-1 is down low third walk of the game by the grandson of Mimi and Gadsden Alabama Caden Johnson Mimi has provided the full count ministries verse of the game that we'll use after today's contest Brady Hendricks the first baseman steps in Another left-handed batter. That is now five of the first eight. Wyatt Heidel's standing on deck. He's practicing swinging right-handed, so I'm assuming he is a right-handed batter. 1-0 pitch outside. Johnson gave a double look to Baird. Try to get the count up there right. Two balls, no strikes. Hendricks one for two. He scored two runs in game one. Looks at a called strike there. Also walked. A 
lot of movement in that those hands in that bat. Get everything going. Gets jammed, fouled off to the left side. Might be playable for Aguilar, but he won't be able to get there. It'll land inside the fenced area of Pioneer Field. But Aggie could not get over there to try to scale the wall. Carter Vrabel was unbelievable at that the last two years. Six foot four third baseman, but I'm telling you what, he could he could scoot over to that a wall. Made a lot of great catches. In foul territory, there's a throw to first. Bared back. Breaking pitch over four called strike three. Down goes Hendricks looking. Third strike out of the game for Johnson. Brings up Wyatt Heidel. Catcher, number nine, hitter in the lineup. H-E-I-D-L-E, -E, Wyatt Heidel, redshirt sophomore, 6'2", 205 pounds, from Kingston, Tennessee. Went to Roan County. Pitch almost. <laughs> Drew Plummer almost hit Caden Johnson on that throw down to second base. Baird in there easily. Pitch called a ball. Caden Johnson. Just squatted out there on pitcher's mound, and I would not recommend that positioning from here on out. I've seen, I can't remember now who it was last year, but somebody got drilled right in the back with the throw down to second. Maybe in my day, pitchers got off that mound a lot better. It has been pretty close several times this year. I don't fouls that one off. Idol struggling with the bat this year in his 15 games now, 12 starts, batting 100, three for 30. Big jump off at second base by Baird, but a swing and a miss. Haven't seen that kind of a lead this year very often. Seemed like it was pretty popular the last couple of years. The big hop step off of the base, and then if Pitcher doesn't look. You just keep going. 1-2 is also scoots through the five hole. Drew Plummer to the backstop. Baird now down at third base on a wild pitch. Second wild pitch of the game. On deck, Charlie Davis, the leadoff batter. Breaking pitch has the entire infield heading toward the dugout, but the only opinion that matters is Chris Judkins, who's behind home plate. Well, the full count ministry is full count with two outs and a runner at third. Swing and a miss. Johnson gets another strikeout to end the inning and end the threat. Strikes out the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base. Three walks he's pitched around so far. Probably going to have to end that soon as Columbia State comes in with a 298 batting average. See where they fit in the TCCAA in batting average. Walter State is a very, very good hitting team. Chattanooga State as well. Columbia State comes in at fourth in the conference, 298. Roan State at 302. Chattanooga State 324. Walter State 351. That is a good hitting club. We will head to the bottom of the second inning. Ball State will send six, seven, and eight to the place plate. We don't have a pitcher out there yet. He's waiting for his catcher, Wyatt Heidel, who struck out to end the inning. So it'll be a minute or two for Cole O'Brien to come out. 
I want to thank Mike Hoover, Gage Hoover, our left fielder's father, for his support. Purchasing an outfield sign. It's just right below the Toyota of Gallatin scoreboard out there in left center field. Mike Hoover, probably in the Smyrna office. They live in Smyrna. They have locations for Accurate Mortgage at Cool Springs and Smyrna. You can go to Accurate MTG, which you know is short for mortgage, also short for meeting. But here it's for mortgage, accuratemortgage.com, MTG, or call 615 615- Eight three three zero four five six. I would assume Mike and Angie Hoover are here in attendance today. They might be listening in in the Vol State Sports Network. But thanks to Accurate Mortgage for their support of Vol State baseball here at Pioneer Field. All White is checked in on the uh, private line of the. Broadcast. Parker White's father. Jamie Johnson listening in, he says. Father of Cole Johnson. Player for Columbia State. Aguilar looks at the first pitch from Cole O'Brien, not Cole Johnson for ball one. And Laguilar can just hit the ball. Base hit in the left field. He's been up twice, and he's put a charge in both baseballs. It's his second collegiate hit. He smoked the line drive to right field as a pinch hitter in game one, but Jackson Diamond made a great catch. A ball that looked like it was heading over his head. Gage Hoover gets his first at bat of the day. Son of Mike and Angie takes a big old swing and comes up empty. Am I going to find Cole Johnson's name on their roster? Paul White, that's the question. Another swing and a miss. Will he be redshirting? There he is, number 31, from Knoxville West. Imagine that. Throw over to first. Aguilar back. O2 pitch, driven out to right center field. That sends Diamond back, and he will make the catch right in front of the full count ministry sign. Just before he got to the warning track, haul that smash in off the bat of Gage Hoover, the 2023 Mr. Baseball here in the state of Tennessee. So one out here in the bottom of the second inning. Drew Plummer steps to the plate. Swing and a miss. Through a red shirt freshman, Summit High School. Getting his first plate appearance of the day. Gets jammed on that one. He's down in the count 0-2. 5'11", 165 pound. Utility man. He'll play second base, get in there at shortstop. Now behind the plate, the son of Bobby Plummer in Spring Hill and Stacy Plummer in Thompson Station. Fastball misses outside. Grandson of Poppy and Nana in Franklin. Papa Mike and Nana Sue here in Hendersonville area. Mimi in Old Hickory, Tennessee. Fly ball on the right side. Long run by Diamond Hudson. Miles is over and Ball's on the warning track. Count remains one ball and two strikes. Long run for Hudson Miles. Thought that ball was going to get a little bit deeper, but Miles playing up the middle at double play depth. He ran about 150 feet to try to get that one. Just what I 
flip the switch. Brian throws over to first base where Nathan Aguilar stands leading off. Swing and a miss. Plummer down on strikes. Two outs, third strikeout by Cole O'Brien. And Reggie Cooper steps in. Cooper 0 for 2 in game one. Had a walk and a strikeout. Looks at the first pitch in the dirt. Dug out of there by Heidel. Kind of funny how languages go. It's a missionary for full count. That ground ball to third at fair territory. Charlie Davis picks and throws over to Hendricks at first. Cooper retired and so are the Pioneers in the second. Wyatt Heidel spells his name H-E-I-D-L-E -E, and Heidel Rubio, missionary down in Nicaragua for Full Count Ministries, spells his name J-A-I-R-O, pronounced the exact same way, Heidel. No runs, one hit, no errors, one runner left on base. We got zeros on the Toyota of Gallatin scoreboard again. Through two, Columbia State scored two runs in the top of the third in game one and added an insurance run in the top of the seventh. Went on to defeat Ball State three to nothing in game one. Caden Johnson will try to put another zero up on the board. He will face the top of the lineup. Take a quick break. Be right back on the Ball State Sports Network. Belmont University commit Charlie Davis steps in. Facing Caden Johnson. Looks at the first pitch inside. Belmont playing the University of Illinois Chicago in Missouri Valley Conference action today. Lost a tough game yesterday after leading 6-2. to two. Gave up six runs in the eighth and the ninth. Davis swings at a breaking pitch, fouls that one to the on-deck circle. Count goes one ball, two strikes. To the Chargers third baseman. And this is going to hit him in the wallet. First hit batter of the game by Caden Johnson. Number three, one of ten Ball State miles. players. Involved in the Full Count Ministries 242 group here at Ball State. Meet once a week, typically on Friday mornings. Five pitchers, five position players. Four of those pitchers are left hander. Hudson Miles walked in the first, was stranded at third. Pitch gets in there for a called strike. Walked four times today. Five plate appearances. Had a seven-game hitting streak broken in game one. There's a throw over to first. Charlie Davis had his five-game hitting streak broken in game one as well. 
Jackson Diamond's seven game hitting streak was broken. Coming in today, Jackson Diamond and Hudson Miles, two longest that I saw, seven games. Breedling and Davis both had five games. Another throw over to first. None of those guys got a hit in game one. Bottom four guys in the lineup had the five hits for Columbia State. Irwin with two. Baird, Rodriguez, and Hendricks one apiece. But Miles, one pitch away from getting another free pass. Three balls and a strike. Fouls that one off to the right side. That Catches the basket right behind the lights. On the pole behind the dugout. Those big old twigs up there in that basket. I believe an Osprey has built a nest up there at one time. Well, full count ministries, full count right after. Caden Johnson throws over first base. Charlie Davis with 11 stolen bases has not been caught this year. He's taking off, and he is not. Pitch is grounded to short. Molnar is going to throw on to first base to get Miles to slowly hit to try to turn two, and Davis probably bearing down on second base. Now batting number 23, Jackson. Molnar decides to take the sure out. Jackson Diamond, who grounded out to Molnar in the first, steps in. One out and a runner in scoring position. There's that big hop out at second base. Breaking pitch lifted out to left field. Gage Hoover back. And Gage Hoover's going to watch this one golf out of here for a two-run home run on a breaking pitch. There's no way that a batter can go up there looking for a breaking pitch around the shoe tops. He just put a good swing on a not-so-good pitch. And Columbia State puts two on the board here in the top of the third, just like they did, did in game one, a two-run home run by Jackson Diamond. That is Diamond's sixth home run of the year, leads the squad. And Reedling's going to take one off the front shoulder. Second hit batter of the inning. Let's see if that draws a... Visit from Sam Folks, and it will. Second hit batter of the inning. Johnson came in to today's game. Only two hit batters all year, and he's hit Charlie Davis and now Jackson Reedling in the third. Jackson Diamond picks up RBIs 32 and 33. That leads the squad. Came in with 31. The next highest was Braxton Baird and Blake Merwin with 20 apiece. See where it puts him in the overall lead and the runs batted in. Now puts him in now third place. Michael he was tied for third. Now he has third all by himself, depending on what Cade Chamley and Brock Ballou do with Chattanooga State as McClellan looks at a called strike. McClellan struck out looking to end the first inning. Basically the breaking pitch right there that Jackson Diamond golfed out to left field. Wind still blowing from center field to the third base dugout. Slow tapper to the left side. Nathan Aguilar is going to go the short distance to second base. Get out number two. Bang, bang, play right, there at second. Four, Blake Merwin. Two outs brings up Blake Merwin. He struck out the lead off the second.
Runner goes. Pitch is a ball. Throw down, gets by Molnar, but it heads over toward third base. So, Clellan in there with a stolen base. Another one where Caden Johnson was lucky he didn't take one in the back of the head there. Just over the top as he's crouching on the uh, mound. Two outs and a runner in scoring position again. One hit in the inning, but two hits. Wummer has that one pop out. Not sure what happened there. She might have taken a bite of that one. Wonder if he was expecting a different pitch. That has happened a number of times this year. With the runner at second base, signs given, but not apparently completely communicated. Didn't look like he flinched on that one at all. That one's got to be in there for a called strike. Erwin, a red shirt sophomore from Riverdale High School. Former home of Big J Sharla. Fouled off the screen. Yeah, it goes two balls and two strikes. Former BCA, BCA Athletic, and then came to Ball State, played a couple years. We got three at bats his redshirt freshman year, then became the starting left fielder for the majority of the season a year ago. Breaking pitch, catches that inside corner, and Merwin down on strikes. He, he knew it was going to be close. Chris Judkins rings him up for the fifth strikeout of the ball game for Caden Johnson, but Chargers two runs on the two-run home run by Jackson Diamond, the only hit of the inning. No errors, one runner left on base. A carbon copy of game one. No score until the top of the third when Columbia State puts two on the board. Take a quick break, come back for the bottom of the third. You're listening to the Ball State Sports Network. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. At Ball State, we offer end-to-end -end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Ball State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. I took business management because I want to have my own business one day. It was time for me to take that step and enroll in Ball State. When a student comes to Ball State, they can leave here with knowledge that applies to all aspects of business. Tim Reese back on the Ball State Sports Network. Move to the bottom of the third inning. Both teams with one hit. Columbia State just happened to have left the yard. Pioneers will send one, two, and three to the plate against Cole O'Brien, who has given up only one hit in the first nine. Has walked one. One runner reached on an error. Actually, he reached on a fielder's choice in my book. But an error it was. Charged on the play. First error of the day. First pitch to Bell misses outside. Stephen Bell looking for his first hit in a while. Ground ball at the middle. This isn't going to be it. Miles on a couple big hops over to Hendricks, who must have forgot to put his foot on the bag to receive that throw. After he received it, he looked down at the base to make sure that he was standing on it. Stephen Bell now 0 for 2. Corbin Overbay walked in the first inning, was stranded at third. State looking for that framework. Athletics first run of the game, first run of the day. 
shut out in game one. Popped up, that will get out of play. O'Brien working quickly. One ball, two strikes, now the count. Another tapper toward the Pioneer dugout. Foul ball gets out of play over toward the Bobby Hudson Pavilion. Spraying them all over the yard. Corbin over Bay acting like baseballs are free around here. That'll stay in the field of play and be easily tracked down, not like the Easter eggs that we hide at our Easter egg hunt. My kids are in their mid-20s, soon to be 30 and 32. They still hunt for that golden egg. One ball, two strike pitch to Corbin Overbay, swing and a miss. O'Brien gets the slider by him. First two. Set down by Cole O'Brien. It's his fourth strike out of the game. Logan Molnar steps in. All State now been shut out for the second time of the year. Three to nothing in game one. Had a 15 to nothing shutout as that one sails over the head of Logan Molnar. Purpose pitch? I wouldn't see why. 15 to nothing, Chattanooga State won game three of that series here at Ball State. Molnar reached on that fielder's choice down to third baseman Charlie Davis who tried to get the lead runner Corbin Overbay at second, but Either Overbay reached it or Hudson Miles didn't have his foot on the base or didn't have control of the ball. I'm not sure, but Overbay was ruled safe. As Molnar, I've got three. I had 3 0. Is that wrong? Let's see what. I've got now 3 1. Let's see what Chris Judkins puts up there. Guess he won't. That's ball four. Second walk of the game. Laura O'Brien came in with 11 walks in 18 innings. 27 strikeouts. I have that. And I need to have a research guy here and a my calculator open. And Lewis has looked at nothing but strikes here in game two. One pitch. Lewis swings and misses at a fastball. It tied him up. He's down in the count 0-2. You know, I don't even need my calculator for that one. 13 and a half strikeouts per nine innings for Cole O'Brien coming in. Swing and a miss. And a Lewis riding that struggle bus here today. It's especially here in game two, he's seen six pitches, and all of them. Either been called strikes or swinging strikes. He is down on strikes for the second time. Five strikeouts for O'Brien. One runner left on base. Still, after 10 innings of baseball today, Ball State cannot push a run across. Caden Johnson back out for the fourth. Thank 
Jersey Mike's located right across the street from Ball State campus over at 940 Memory Lane. Alex Qualls had a number nine over there, Club Supreme. Mike's way. Put a little, uh, put some uh, banana peppers on there. No banana peppers. Mayonnaise, bacon. Oh, I like it. Michelle Fuller, the marketing director, and Julie Garrett Johnson, general manager over at Jersey Mike's. A sub above. My favorite sub of all the sub shops around here in Middle Tennessee. I just go to the store and buy me a Jersey Mike's gift card and use that every time. Makes things a whole lot easier. They've got a nice sign out there in left center field just to the right of the Toyota of Gallatin scoreboard. Top of the fourth we go. Braxton Baird, Brady Hendricks, and Wyatt Heidel. Baird has to spin away from a fastball inside. Baird walked in the second, stole second. And reached third on a wild pitch, but was stranded right there. Caden Johnson, five strikeouts in the ball game. Couple hit batters and three walks, so gives and he takes, swing and a miss. Came in with a 2.79 ERA, a short stint in his last outing. Two and a third innings, did not give up a hit. At least on my score sheet, I think on uh, Roan State's, they, they gave a ground ball that came right back to Caden Johnson. And he boxed it right off his glove, and it kicked toward first base line. He tried to behind the back toss to Connor Paul, but square around a bunt is Hendricks. Takes that one for a ball. I think Roan State gave a hit to the batter. I didn't charge a hit to Caden Johnson, though. It's called strike there. Gave up three runs, only one was earned. Walked five, hit one, struck out five. So this game is looking similar to that Roan State ball game. Thrower to first. Baird back. A couple stolen bases already in this ball game by Columbia State. Another throw over. One pitch coming to Hendricks. Runner goes, and the pitch is fouled off. Might have hit his hand. He's going to head to first base, so it's not fouled off. Maybe it hit him in the wrist. Another hit batter. Third of the game. There is a right-hander loosening in the bullpen. First two have reached. Wyatt Heidel, he'll be looking to bunt here, I would assume. Nobody out. Aguilar at third as Heidel's already squaring. He fouls that one off. Columbia State comes in third in the conference in stolen bases, had 62 in 77 attempts. Southwest Tennessee had 79 in 98 attempts as Idle attempts to bunt again and comes up empty. Now down in the count, 0-2, Connor Paul about in his front pocket from first base. Nathan Aguilar is staying close to third. 
but just in case the bunt came hard, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not still bunting. 0-2 oh, count. Not squaring yet. He is not bunting. Fouls that one off. Charlie Davis on deck. Top of the order. If you don't have sunscreen on, you're gonna get gonna get burnt today, but probably also have a good chance at some wind burn. Runners go, swing and a miss on a ball down in the dirt. A strikeout. Another stolen base by play, Braxton Baird. Charlie Davis. Six strikeouts now for Johnson. That's the first out. <coughs> Davis hit by a pitch in the third. Scored ahead of Jackson Diamond's two-run home run. Throw over to first base. Runners at the corners. Jake and Big J Charlotte listening in on the broadcast. Checked in at Therese Sports at gmail.com. Great to have the Charlottes listening in. So I'm going to pop up. It might be playable. Plumber comes over, gives it a look. Just misses the grandstands to the left of the press box. Jay Charlo. I'm guessing uh, Delin's probably out getting a massage somewhere. Mama. Maybe it's her birthday. She's shopping. That's what she's doing. 0 1 pitch. It's ripped into right field. That's a base hit by Charlie Davis. His first of the day. Stephen Bell to cut it off and gets it back in. And runners at the corners again. Columbia State now leads three to nothing on the RBI single by Charlie Davis. A couple steps too far to the right of Connor Paul. Here comes the slow walk of head coach Jim McGuire. That will end the day for Caden Johnson. Well, the Summit Concrete call to the bullpen for Vol State. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. At Vol State, we offer end-to-end -end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Vol State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. A degree in criminal justice can help you find the exciting career that you've been looking for. As a member of law enforcement, as a crime scene investigator, a teacher in a classroom, a detective working on cases, a lawyer or a judge, or nearly any job where you get to put the bad guys away. Learn more at volstate.edu. Summit Concrete call to the bullpen for the Pioneers. Noah Ward, the new pitcher, sophomore out of Knoxville Catholic High School. He is on in relief of Caden Johnson, who goes three and a third innings. He's up two hits. So far, three runs, four walks, six strikeouts. Three hit batters, two runners on base are his responsibility. Ward, 6'2", 200 pound. Right-hander, son of Melissa Ward, brother to Abram and Sophie, as a mammal in Clinton, Tennessee. Ward pitched against Roan State this past weekend. He is on for his fifth appearance of the year, all in relief. He has one save in seven innings, given up 12 hits, six runs they were earned, walked four, struck out five. He will... Try to keep the Pioneers within striking distance here. 
Just down three to nothing. He will face Hudson Miles. So the runners at the corners after an RBI single by Charlie Davis chases Caden Johnson. Join the show. You can send an email to tresports at gmail.com, just like Mimi has. Is she is rooting hard for her grandson, Caden Johnson. We will now have to watch the rest of the game from the dugout as Noah Ward, our Summit Concrete call to the bullpen for Ball State. One out, runners at the corners. Miles 0 for 1 with a walk. He's going to square the bunt. The Pitch is taken for a ball. Stolen base for Charlie Davis. Now puts runners at second and third. Infield will come in at the grass. Ward's going to be looking for the strikeout here against Hudson Miles. This is outside. Jackson Diamond is standing on deck. He gave Columbia State the lead with a two-run homer in the third. Called strike. Ward. The beneficiary of that call right there. Hudson Miles did not agree with that. 3 runs, 2 hits for the Chargers, no runs, 1 hit for Ball State. Ward in danger now of loading the bases. Two runners on base. The responsibility of Caden Johnson. Fly ball down the right field. And that might go foul. It will. Stephen Bell gives chase, but he's going to retrieve it after it hits the ground. Up a full count, Ministries full count. Got to get Big Jay Charlotte one of those alumni bricks, Jake. Breaking pitch, nice. At bat there by Miles as he fouls that one off. Stayed in there on the full count breaking pitch. That ends up being a fastball. He's going to get hit right in the shoulder, but it's a breaking pitch curved right over the plate. Great pitch that Miles spoils. Ward got to come back. That's going to get a run in. Fly ball out to right center field. Stephen Bell. See, he's going to try to throw to the plate. Instead, he's going to split the difference. Sacrifice fly by Hudson Miles gets in the fourth run. Now two outs. That run charged to Johnson. Now batting number 23, Jackson Diamond. Charlie Davis moves over to third base. And Jackson Diamond at the plate. He golfed a... Breaking pitch from Caden Johnson out here to left field, his sixth home run of the year. In the third inning, gets another at-bat here in the fourth. Swung at the first pitch, the last at-bat. This time he lets a fastball go by high. Two in the third, two so far here in the fourth for Columbia State. Trying to get the series win. Breaking pitch, catches the inside corner. Several fans here for Columbia State. Several mid-state players. Breaking pitch driven into left field, a two out RBI by Diamond. Close the book on Johnson. He gives up five runs, all earned. Number 33, Jackson 
Redling. Jackson Reedling steps in. He's 0 for 0, walked and been hit by a pitch. Got hit by the first pitch he saw in his last at-bat. Throw over the first dime in his back. Two hits in the inning, one by Charlie Davis, one by Jackson Diamond. Walk the hit by pitch. And the single by Charlie Davis have all come home to score. On deck, Michael McClellan, the DH. Ball State led the conference in ERA a year ago. Throw over to first. Different story this year, struggling on the mound to throw strikes. A lot of walks per nine innings. I haven't done the math on that, but been at every game. Sometimes my short-term memory goes, but I can feel pretty confident in saying that. Walks are up this year. Counts two balls and a strike to the cleanup hitter. Connor Paul slaps a tag down on Jackson Diamond, but he's back in time. Three RBIs for Diamond today. Two run homer and a two out single. into left field. There's a drive to right field. That's going to get down and get into the corner. Might score another run. Bell digs it out of there. He's going to go to Overbay. There's an RBI double by Jackson Reedling. Scores Jackson Diamond. The Jackson Twins team up for... Number two, Michael McClellan. Another run for Columbia State. Back-to-back -back hits for the Jacksons. Michael McClellan struck out and reached on a fielder's choice. Steps in. He's the eighth batter to come to the plate for the Chargers here in the fourth. Put four on the board. Last couple coming with two outs. Breaking pitch. Caught by a plumber at the knees for a called strike. Lellen, 5'7". Where's the number two? They don't have a number one on this squad. That one gets by a plumber. Reedling going to move over to third on the wild pitch. <clears throat> Two outs, 1-1 one, one count to the DH. Swing and a miss. Ward looking for his first strikeout. He came on in relief for Caden Johnson. With one out, runners at the corners. Both of those runners have scored. Nice stop there by Drew Plummer to keep Reedling at third. Scheduled for seven innings here. We're just in the top of the fourth. Game one lasted two hours and seven minutes. Another stop by Plummer. We'll have a full count. Ministry's full count.
just missed outside. That's a 50-50 call right there. Did not go Ward's way. It's his first walk. Now runners at the corners. Fifth walk of the game. According to my score sheet, I am not official. Blake Merwin steps in. He struck out twice. Not in this inning. Struck out once in the second, once in the third. This is his first time to come to bat in the fourth. By an outside. The wind might give Ward a little bit of trouble as he tries to get a feel for the ball. See him licking his fingers. Trying to get a grip. Throw over to first. Two leadoff batters in the inning walked and were hit by a pitch after a strikeout. A single a sack fly, single double, now a walk. And nearly got over Plummer's glove. Ward steps off the back of the mound trying to regroup. As the sign comes to the belt and delivers, fouled off to the left side. Merwin, a couple hits in game one. 0 for 2 here in game two of the doubleheader. Game three tomorrow at 1 p.m. Right after Palm Sunday services. We are reading the last six chapters of the book of Mark. Chapter 11 starts right out with the story of Palm Sunday. Runner goes, pitch is a ball, throw down to second base, not in time. It's going to be a double steal. Columbia State picks up another run on the double steal. Columbia State now leads seven to nothing. One count to the Chargers center fielder, Blake Merwin, M-E-R-W-I-N. And he's going to walk. Now that is number 11, Braxton. That will Bay. end the ball game for Noah Ward as he will be lifted as Jim McGuire out to Get the baseball, Braxton Baird will come to the plate for the second time in the inning. We'll have another Summit Concrete call to the bullpen. Take another break. We'll be right back on the Ball State Sports Network. Have you ever wondered what happened? Uh, Every All working in the cloud. But what really is the cloud? If you start pulling back the clouds themselves, you find out it's an infrastructure. Computer science is really computer engineering. Right now, Middle Tennessee is quickly becoming a growing tech hub with several IT companies that are looking for skilled workers. If you're pursuing the CIT program at Ball State, you're preparing yourself to fill those positions. Summit Concrete called to the bullpen. Cooper Anderson, six foot, 175 pound freshman from Ravenwood High School. Son of David Anderson and Christina Sargent. On in relief of Noah Ward, who goes a third of the inning. 
now giving up two runs, two hits, walk two, and two runners on base are his responsibility. Anderson on for his sixth appearance of the year, eight and two-thirds innings. Three hits, seven runs, with 11 walks and 16 strikeouts. He's at two strikeouts in per nine innings. Sorry. <laughs> That's two strikeouts per inning. So it would be 18 strikeouts per inning. True freshman from Ravenwood High School. On to face Braxton Baird, who led off this inning with a walk. Caden Johnson started, goes three and a third. No award comes on. Pitches to five batters, retires one. Apparently some jewelry had to be taken off of Cooper Anderson. Come on with two outs and two on. Five runs in for Columbia State here in the fourth inning. Braxton Bears walked twice today here in game two. Anderson gets the first pitch swinging. Baird, he's going to throw... One pitch, and Logan Molnar is trying to get a, another out for next inning. He throws on to first base, but all you need is one out. And that's what happened. One pitch, one out for Anderson as Baird grounds into the fielder's choice. Columbia State scores five runs on three hits. No errors. Two runners left on base. Close the book on Ward. He goes a third of an inning, gives up two hits, two runs that were earned. Walked two, did not strike out a batter, did not hit a batter. These are all unofficial statistics just based on my score sheets. But the Chargers send 10 to the plate to score five runs. Caden Johnson. Charged with five, three in that inning. We move to the bottom of the fourth. Ball State needs to get the sticks going. Maybe the long rest for Cole O'Brien might have an effect as five, six, and seven are scheduled. Connor Paul, Nathan Aguilar, and Gage Hoover set to come to the plate. Let's see if we've got any other scores and the TCCAA today. Cleveland State ended up winning that game against Roan State 14 to 9. So they took three over the Raiders. Dyersburg State won game one against Southwest Tennessee 3 to 2. Southwest is leading 5 to 1, or actually defeated Dyersburg State in game two of their doubleheader. Connor Paul steps to the plate. It's at ball one. Fouls that one off. Struck out in the first. Walter State, after being down to Jackson State in that game one, Paul grounds one to Baird at short. Picks, throws, and retires Paul. For out number one. Boulder State won that game 15 to 6 over Jackson State. And they are only playing one game today. Nathan Aguilar is singled in the second. Makes it a called strike. Making pitch gets in there on the inside corner. 
Aguilar now two for five on the season. Only 400. That breaking pitch lands low. State has been shut out to this point. Swing and a miss on a breaking pitch. Down goes Aguilar. Sixth strikeout of the game for Cole O'Brien. Now back to the number 16, Gage Hoover. Gage Hoover lined out to the right fielder. Nice play again by Jackson Diamond. Steps up. It's a called strike on the inside corner. He started to offer at that, but ended up pulling off of it. Probably would have got jammed. Another one at the knees for a called strike. Cole O'Brien working very quickly. Doesn't seem to have been bothered by that long inning, and he does not get the call there. Everybody's going to have to walk back to their spot. It's pretty close 0-2 pitch to be taken for Gage Hoover. I wouldn't suggest you do it again. Brian, it's a foul ball off about a Hoover. That'll get into the trees. Count remains one ball, two strikes. There's going to be strike three call. Try to tell you, Gage, you can't take that one. Outside corner. O'Brien working very quickly, a one, two, three inning. That is not what the Pioneers were hoping for in their half of the fourth after a very long top of the fourth. We are through four innings, seven to nothing. Granderson will head back out to the mound. Take a quick break. We'll be right back on the Ball State Sports Network. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place, from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. At Ball State, we offer end-to-end -end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Ball State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. I took business management because I want to have my own business one day. It was time for me to take that step and enroll in Ball State. When a student comes to Ball State, they can leave here with knowledge that applies to all aspects of business. Cybercrimes take place online, and companies need more well-trained workers to stop it. Ball State is training me to help combat cybercrimes in the future. We're training them for those type of jobs that are out there Ball State CIT programs prepare students to earn industry standard certifications within the IT industry. I choose Ball State because the future needs me now. My story could be your story. Brady Hendricks, Wyatt Heidel, and Charlie Davis to face Cooper Anderson in the top of the fifth inning. And came in and one pitch, one at one out, the third out, bottom of the fourth. Breaking pitch misses outside. Hendricks 0 for 1. Struck out looking in the second and was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Swing and a miss. Thanks to our athletic director, Bobby Hudson, for opening up the concession stand today, just below the Toyota of Gallatin press box here today. Check swing. They're going to check in first base, but he says no. Can't see that swing. The left hander. We'll have a full count. Ministries full count to. Chargers first base, Cooper Anderson working quickly, and he's going to hit Hendricks. That's adding insult to injury is you hit a batter that 
Ball would have been just outside of the zone and not hit him. Been ball four. Now batting number three. First hit batter for Cooper Anderson and Wyatt Heidel steps to the plate. Don't listen to public address announcer Braxton Alexander if you're a Wyatt Heidel fan. He just doesn't know. He's over here learning some Spanish. He's trying to, he's taking Spanish classes here at Ball State. I told you how to say Heidel, spelled J-A-I-R-O, Heidel Rubio. So you say Heidel. Now Wyatt, he doesn't spell his last name like that. Nor does Mr. Heidel, his father, throw over to first. Hello to Heidel Rodriguez and Alex Montiel down in Pocatala, Mazante, Nicaragua. Breaking pitch. This is down in the dirt. Gage Hoover still in left. Reggie Cooper still in center. Stephen Bell in right shielding his eyes. Nathan Aguilar third. Logan Molnar short. Cooper Anderson delivers a ball in the dirt. Plummer. Able to find a handle on that one, and Brady Hendricks stays at first. Corbin Overbay still at second base, and Connor Paul still at first base. That's your defensive positioning. So for a ground ball, haven't had a do that double play all day. Not going to have it with Wyatt Heidel at the plate. Back to the top of the lineup. Eight, Charlie, Charlie Davis. Davis. First walk of the game for Cooper Anderson. That is walk number seven unofficially. We'll go along with four hit batters. Too many free passes for Pioneer pitching. Only four hits up on the board for Columbia State. Split finger fastball there. This is outside. Charlie Davis got his first hit of the after afternoon in the fourth. RBI single to right. Now one for five. Fouls that one off to the left side. That'll get into the parking lot. Right where R.J. Moore parked his Corvette. Is that where you got your Corvette over there? Right next to your Hummer. Popped up. That'll get back. Probably stay inside the Tim Garrett Baseball Complex. Be landing right over there by the Alumni Brick Patio. have a alumni spotlight here soon. Charlie Davis watched that one all the way in. We're going to check the base umpire. He said he did not go. Count goes two balls and two strikes. Trying to get a 10-foot by 10-foot square patio filled with alumni names and what positions they played and what years they played here just inside the area. Line drive out the left center field. That's trouble for Ball State. Gage Hoover able to cut it off before going to the fence, but that'll be an RBI double by Charlie Davis, the Belmont University commit. Drives in the eighth run of the ball game. It's his second RBI, and second hit in a row. Hudson Miles. Hudson Miles steps to the plate. Runners now at second and third. Nobody out. Field now in again as Hudson Miles comes to the plate. This situation with bases loaded in the fourth. Ended up hitting a sacrifice fly out to right field for an RBI. He's 0 for 1. Looks at a pitch right down Broadway. Fouls 
that one off. MGM Industries foul ball. Some visiting teams, they'll go get those balls. I don't see anybody coming out of the Columbia State dugout to uh, retrieve any foul balls off to the right side. There's a ground ball to the right side. Connor Paul's going to grab that one and stare Wyatt Heidel back to third. There's the first out. Now batting number 23, Jackson Diamond. Jackson Diamond steps in. He's two for three. Three RBIs, a home run, and a single. Getting started off with a hit batter on what would have been ball four. Strike at the knee call right there. Wyatt Heidel walked, put runners at first and second. Charlie Davis deposits a double in the left center field, driving in one, and a ground ball to third gets us the situation we're in right now. Second and third, one run in, one out. Jackson Diamond. Down in the count, no balls and two strikes. Cooper Anderson looking for a strikeout. Does not get Diamond chasing on that breaking pitch. Heard from Jacob Messer, Ball State alum in game one. And we've heard from Big J Sharla, another Ball State alum. Pitch inside, nearly hit Diamond, but it gets out of the glove of Drew Plummer, and another run's going to come in to score. Columbia State now leads nine to nothing. Not the official score. I would see if I could see that one again, make a determination on whether I think that's a pass ball or a wild pitch. Be a wild pitch right there. Fly ball to left field. That should get another run in. Hoover is back. He's continuing to go, and it lands on the warning track. Drops safely, and Diamond's going to head to third. The throw is cut off. Not in time. Hoover battling the wind. Columbia State now takes a 10 to nothing lead. Coach McGuire back out of the dugout and that will end the day for Cooper Anderson. We'll take a break, come back with the Summit Concrete call to the bullpen after this short break.
Some of concrete call to the bullpen for the Pioneers. Fourth pitcher on for Vol State is Jack McLaury, freshman from Independence High School. 6'1", 155 pounds from Las Casas, Tennessee. Son of Mike and Ashley McLaury, brother to Judd, grandson, Grandpa Mahoney and Grandma Deb in Iowa and Mimi in Murfreesboro. Lori on in relief of Cooper Anderson. Jackson Diamond at third base with Jackson Reedling at the plate. Infield is in. Ten to nothing. Lead for the Chargers. RBI triple for Jackson Diamond. He's a double away from the cycle. Jackson Reedling has a double in three plate appearances. Also walked and been hit by a pitch, so he's one for one. Glory on for his eighth appearance of the year. Eight plus ERA, 11 innings, 15 hits, 14 runs, 10. Those were earned, walked nine and struck out 12. Looking for a strikeout here with one out. It's a foul tip. Where is it? There we go. Now I got it figured out. I don't know why my scoreboard wasn't working. Got a 3 1 count. That's what we got. So one out and a runner at third, three runs in. Ball four. Michael McClellan, the DH, stands in. Now the middle infielders are at double play depth. Little pitch from McGlory in there for a called strike. McClellan struck out in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the third, walked in the fourth, has a couple stolen bases. Throw over to first. Careful of those throws right there as that sun is right in Connor Paul's eyes at first base. So a lob throw from McLaurie. Trying to keep Reedling close. Sidearm delivery low and inside. Ten run mercy rule after five in a seven inning ball game. So Jack McLaurie trying to keep it right here and then Ball State will have to score the bottom of the fifth to keep this game going. Don't want to give up any more runs. Breaking pitch is taken, and Reedling will head down to second. No throw. Swing and a miss. Cooper Anderson goes two-thirds of an inning, gives up two hits. Three runs as it stands right now, but Diamond on third base is his responsibility. And that run's going to score on this fly ball to Reggie Cooper. Throw's going to go to third base, but Reedling going to move up to third. Another sacrifice fly and an RBI. This one to Michael McClellan. Columbia State, the 11 to nothing lead. Now batting, number 24, Blake Merwin. Two outs. That closes the book on Anderson. Gives up four runs. They were earned in his two thirds of an inning. Walked one, hit a batter. Now Blake Merwin steps in. Called strike on the outside corner. Yeah. 
Hard shot ground ball to Overbay, but he gloves, throws on to Paul. We're out number three. Laurie comes in, walks a batter, gives up a sacrifice fly, and then it gets a ground out to end the inning. Eight more batters come to the plate. Four runs scored for the Chargers on two hits. No errors. One runner left on base. Headed to the bottom of the fifth. Ball State needs two to continue in this ball game. They are down 11 to nothing. The mercy rule is in effect. Cole O'Brien back out for the bottom of the fifth. We'll face eight, nine, and one. See if we've got some pinch hitters. I'm thinking we might as Coach McGuire is over talking to our home plate umpire. We haven't seen anybody come out in the on-deck circle yet, but they might be looking for their bat and looking for their helmet. Drew Plummer's coming out. He will lead off the bottom of the fifth. Pioneers with only one hit in the ball game. Game one only had four hits, did not score in game one, and have not scored here to this point. There is a pinch hitter on deck, Thedrick Harris, that will hit for Reggie Cooper. Plummer looks at a first pitch strike from Cole O'Brien looking to get a shutout. There's a fly ball out to right field. Should be easy for Jackson Diamond, and he will make the catch. Route number one, Thedrick Harris. Get a pinch hit opportunity here in the bottom of the fifth inning. He'll be hitting for Reggie Cooper. Cedric Harris, Jr. He's getting his eighth at bat. He goes up there swinging. Fouls the first pitch he sees off. That'll catch a little bit of the home plate umpire, Chris Judkins. Good. Starting pitchers. Today's game, we're both from Alabama, so is our home plate umpire, Chris Judkins from Huntsville. A couple hour drive down, maybe about an hour and 45. Hopefully he'll have clear roads as he heads down. Had some construction issues coming up. That one breaking pitch right at, right at Thed's head. Thedrick, don't call me Thaddeus, one of the 12 disciples. RJ, don't call him that, okay? But then by that, don't call Thaddeus one of the disciples, Thedrick. 2-1, swing and a miss on a fastball. O'Brien challenged Thedrick there from John T. Overton High School, Nashville, Tennessee. And he gets a strikeout on another high fastball out of the zone. Eight strike out of the game. And Cam Hodges steps to the plate. Pinch hitting here in the fifth. A severe County Smoky Bear. Cam Hodges drilled one off a center field fence. His last time to the plate. Looks like O'Brien's just reaching back, playing old fashioned hardball right here. And how fast he can get it into Wyatt Heidel's glove. Ground ball backhanded, but slips on through Charlie Davis. Sorry about that, Cam. Won't be able to see that, but that'll be a base hit. Hard smash down to third base. Line Cam Hodges gets on base with two outs. Now his former high school teammate, Corbin Overbay, steps to the plate. He's 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. 
Second hit of the ball game for Ball State. Sam Hodge is a red shirt freshman. That's lifted out to left field. Jackson Reedling is going to come in and make the grab for out number three. That will end the ball game. As Columbia State wins this one 11 to nothing in the Mercy Rule final and get two shutouts of the Pioneers. Three to nothing and eleven to nothing. No runs, one hit in the inning. No errors, one runner left on base. Ball State falls to nine and sixteen overall. One in nine in conference play. Columbia State moves to eight and three in conference. 18 and 10. Cole O'Brien gets a complete game shutout. Picks up the win. Don't know the actual totals of his wins. Losing pitcher is Caden Johnson. He falls to 2 and 2 on the season. 11 runs, 6 hits, 1 air showing up on the Toyota of Gallatin. Scoreboard, no runs, two hits, no errors for the Pioneers. Didn't even get to our get to the alumni spotlight brought to you by Allie Cassidy, Brick and Stone. Andrew Finney, a first baseman and third baseman in 1997 and 1998. He stayed here local and owned a pharmacy. I'm not sure if he still owns that pharmacy down in Gallatin or not. A long, hollow church fellow member with myself. Andrew Finney has a brick in the alumni patio. So we want to thank Ali Cassidy Brick and Stone for sponsoring our alumni spotlight. Today's Game 2 alumni, Andrew Finney, 1997 and 1998. If you have a Second year player or somebody who's red shirt freshman and maybe not going to come back next year or sophomore, grandson or son, you want to get them a brick just like Dave Eatman has sent me an email, said that he wants to learn more about how to get Noah a brick in the alumni patio. Send an email to tresports at gmail.com. Just like Buddy Smothers did. Been listening all afternoon. Charlie Davis is his great nephew. Said he's, uh, I guess, been a broadcaster is what he's saying. Did what you're doing for 34 years. Buddy Smothers. Thanks for the email. Trey King checking in. Former state investigator. Trey, it is the same Tim Reese. That is your son on the mound that just got his uh, his victory. Trey, you need to let me know how many wins he's got. I sure do remember you. I am who you think I am. So good to hear from you. He was assigned on the uh, TBI. I believe he's a state investigator for the Attorney General's office. Trey King checking in. We'll have to hook up, Trey. I see your number. Appreciate you sending that. I'll give you a call here soon. Our player of the game is Cole O'Brien. I said King. <laughs> Grayson King pitched game one. He was our Toyota of Gallatin player of the game in game one, and Cole O'Brien's going to be the Toyota of Gallatin player of the game in game two, another shutout. Thank Toyota of Gallatin for their support of Vol State baseball. With the brand new scoreboard out there. And let's see if we can find our full count ministries verse of the game. It's going to be found in Romans 15, 
5. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. That's Romans 15, 5, provided by Mimi, Ms. Dina Wise Johnson. She's an evangelist down in Gadsden, Alabama. She wears a lot of hats as well. She's got a real job. She's the wife of granddaddy, Joe Johnson Sr., and she's a big help on the broadcast here. A lot of encouragement, and uh, we sure appreciate her along with Caden Johnson. Not been a good day for Vol State baseball, though. Good day for the Columbia State Chargers. So they win 3 to nothing and 11 to nothing In game two, that took an hour and 50 minutes, only went five innings. Columbia State gets the shutouts today. We'll be back at it tomorrow at 1 o'clock Central Time. Nine-inning contest right here. If you can't come to the park, please join me again on the Ball State Sports Network for Athletic Director Bobby Hudson and Head Coach Jim McGuire. This is Tim Reese saying God bless you. We'll talk to you tomorrow right here on the YouTube channel we call Ball State Sports Network. Good night, everybody. God bless you.